Schoenberg recognizes me. Arthur Schoenberg, man. I started yeah. just coming up. Born and raised in Harlem. Yes. I used to go to the Schoenberg Library when it was around the corner. Mm -hmm. And then the, around the other corner was the County Cullen, man. Yes. This means everything to me. You know what the big part of all this is? I swear to God to you. And the story I had to tell for them, man. When I was in the street selling drugs and I didn't want to sell drugs no more, and I got busted and I came home, I said, I'm going to find out why I was selling drugs. Mm -hmm. I said, because I'm getting away from it. I came to the, the county Cullen, studied the history of drugs, and the articles is in here. I want everybody to come to the county Cullen. You'll see all the articles and what I was writing about Harlem mm -hmm. in the 60s. Right. And how the game changed, man. I got, I'm dropping, oh, man, I can't wait till I have another one where I can tell you, man. You changed your life around. Talk about what, what, how that was. A lot of people look up to you. Talk about that process. Well, you know what? what when I, um, you see, like, uh, let, let me, so y'all can connect with this, the young rappers, right? You know there's a lot of rappers now who are five percenters, right? And y'all know where the five percenters places are, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you look at the seven. bottom of that, you're going to see Street Academy. Right. The Street Academy was founded by the Urban League, and they gave it to the five percenters later on after the educational program collapsed. Yes. That's the educational program I came to. Okay. Dr. Ben Jockman, Dr. Henry Clark, all of them used to come through and teach us, right? And then when they was coming through teaching us, right, all of that there, I had to find out who I was. Right. So after I came through that educational program, in the 60s, I went to Africa, and I ain't never looked back since then. So, Dabba Dan, you just released your book. Yeah. Can you tell everybody about your book and stuff like that? Everything you ever wanted to know about Harlem, but don't know who to ask, especially young guys like y'all. Yes. I'm the last generation to see Harlem when there was no drug epidemic. And yeah. I'm the first generation of the great migration that come from the South. Let me repeat that. Yeah. I'm the last generation to see Harlem when it didn't have a drug problem, right? Right. You know, and I'm the first generation in Harlem, right, of the great migration that come from the South. Right. That's, you know, you really need to understand that. Yeah. I saw Harlem. What your, the Harlem y'all see today is a community. Right. The Harlem that I grew up in was a village. Exactly. And it's a big difference between a village, everybody pulls together. A community, everybody comes in and do what they want to do. Remember exactly. that. Oh, but what, I want to say one, one, one thing. I want to say one thing. Because we got the number one podcast show in Harlem, right? The Beat 139, we interview you at uh, Harlem Honors, right? 2018. Yeah. But I always Super tell people how Harlem is important to you because you always show love to us and, and people in Harlem yeah. and we show love we we, we follow on your blueprint yeah. so your blueprint is showing love to Harlem we show love to Harlem we the number one podcast we have all, over 250 guests I want you to explain to people why it's important to give back in Harlem it's very important because you know what every day I take buses I live three blocks from my store I take two buses to get there and then walk three blocks it's very important <laughs> that you yeah every day and every day I stand That's on my Harlem corner right where my store is at yeah. You, you understand that? That's giving back. Giving back is letting the people know no matter what you're doing, you're still a part of them. Mm -hmm. So you take this mic with you everywhere. Man. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Thanks for the interview, brother. Just your thoughts on the Bronx ain't nothing but a Harlem extension. What you yeah. go? What's up? Why y'all keep really? thinking the Bronx yeah. is different? Exactly. The Bronx is a Harlem extension. Yeah, exactly. Let, let me tell you something. Let yes. me tell you something. Yes. When I was growing up, we used to go across the Woods Avenue Bridge over there. It wasn't but a sprinkling of us. That's what it is. You know, and then we pushed, y'all pushed all the, Irish, all the Irish started moving out there. And then that, that ain't nothing but the extension. Half of my friends come in the Bronx. Quit that Bronx stuff. That shit is, tri excuse me, that's tribal. We ain't no tribe no more, man. You understand? Know Thank you, David Dan. Much success, buddy. Much success. The B139. B139, check it out. I'm Doc. Exactly. I'm Don Vito, that's right. Yeah, the B139, Dapper exactly. Dan. He will be in the studio soon. Give an exclusive interview with us real soon. So we need y'all to tune in. We're checking out Harlem. We're heading to Harlem, Sean Burke. We've been personally invited to this event. That's right. Dapper Dan, Harlem legend. The B139. We always on the scene. That's what it is. The B139. That's what we do. Shop, this is Don Vito from the B139. What up, y'all? This is Doc, the B139. Y'all know what it is. The B139, rocking with the greatest, vibing with your favorite.